In this video, I'm going to be making a water sensor to measure the water level in my horse's water trough. Please, before we get started, forgive me, I'm getting over the flu that's been going around, so I'm a little hoarse, but I think I can make it through the video without completely losing my voice. Um, in this project, I, there's been several times where I've gone outside to check my horse's water trough, and it's been completely empty, and I thought there was a lot more water in it than what there was. So the goal here is to build something that will let me know when that water level gets low. Um, this sensor is going to be built from parts straight off the shelf at the hardware store, just PVC pipe, some wire, and some stainless steel screws. And anybody can build this, and you can also use it for other things than just a water trough. Any type of tank that uh, you want to measure the water level, as long as you know the depth uh, and what, what uh, measurement you would consider full, half, and empty, um, then you can use this for your project too. Now, this isn't going to be a big accurate sensor that's going to tell you how many gallons or how many inches of water is in the tank. It's going to tell me five things. It's going to tell me full, three-quarter, half, quarter, and empty. And the goal here is when it gets to quarter and empty, that's when I want to get some type of an email or text to let me know that the water level needs some type of attention. Now, this is going to be, uh, this water sensor is going to be built out of PVC pipe. The thing with PVC pipe is it floats. And um, I'm going to use a half inch PVC pipe. And I've already built one of these before, a while back. And floating wasn't really that big of an issue. Uh, if it had been much bigger, it probably would have floated. So you want to use, I would use half inch PVC three-quarter inch may work um, but you're gonna have to put some type of weight uh, on it to keep it uh, from floating because uh, this sensor you're gonna want it to stay um, you're gonna want to say uh, vertical uh, you don't want it moving around because that could affect uh, your water level measurements so uh, let's get started uh, building this and hopefully it'll all make more sense here in a few minutes Okay, I've got everything laid out here that we need to make uh, the water sensor. And what you're going to need is eight PVC end caps. You're going to need one T fitting, one 90 degree elbow fitting, three stars or pluses, a section of PVC pipe. You're going to need eight stainless steel screws. Now this is going in water so you want to make sure and use a stainless steel screw and get the ones that have the uh, pan heads on them. You don't want the tapered heads because this has to sit flush on our cap and I'll show that here in a minute. You're also going to need some pipe thread compound and then some wire. If you got five different colors of wire use them. It's going to make it a lot simpler when you go to assemble this. I'm just using 22 gauge wire for this and that is plenty. If you've got 24, 26, 28, that'll probably work just as well. Okay, the first step in assembly, now you may or may not have to do this. Now every time I go to the hardware store and buy these PVC fittings, there's always something that's a little bit different. And on these, they're now coming with a dome top. I don't know if you can see that, but it's not flat. It's got a dome end on it, and it's got all the UL ratings and brand name and everything right here on top. I don't know if you can see that. And that's going to prevent the screw from uh, mating with this surface flush. So what we're going to have to do is take these caps, just go over to the sander. Uh, any type of uh, sander will work, and we're going to sand just a little flat spot on the top of these caps so that our screw will mount flush. Then when we're done, our screw's gonna mount flush on top of that cap and we'll have a much better uh, seal than what we would as if it was rounded and we had the letters on there. Um, that, that just gives a water a place to get in there and we don't want water getting inside our sensor because then it'll just always say that, you know, your water level's full. So what I'm going to do here 
is ground off the tops of these caps and to make it easy I'm going to take my PVC pipe I'm going to put the cap on the end and then just give it a slight little tap just enough to knock that uh, round edge off Okay, now that I've gotten the flat spot uh, in the tops of these caps, just sanding off that round dome at the very top, I took it over to the drill press and drilled a 532nd hole in the top. And that hole's just a little bit smaller than what it needs to be, and we want that for the watertight fit. So what you're going to have to do is put your screw in there, and then just take your drill or screwdriver. Drill it down in there, and it's going to be it's going to be like setting a, a tap uh, in there. See, I can't push this back out, so we know we got a really tight fit on that hole, which is going to help uh, eliminate the water uh, getting in there. So once you do that, do that for all eight of them, and then we'll start on the assembly process of the uh, sensor itself. Okay, so now let's get on with the assembly of each of these pieces here. We're going to need our joint compound, our cap and stainless steel screw, two washers and a nut, and our section of wire that we're going to be adding to the cap. You want to be sure and uh, pre-measure all of your wire pieces before you get started. Now what we want to do is make this watertight. So, I've built several of these sensors and none of them have leaked water as of yet over the years and what I do is I just put a little bit of this compound up here at the top of the screw like this and just go all the way around not too much you don't want to go too far down the threads but more is better than not enough because we can always just take this off at the end okay so now I've got the uh, the end uh, with the pipe compound uh, around the the last few of the threads what I'm going to do is just take my drill go through here and slowly drill it in if you go too fast the uh, compound will go all over the place so we're going to make a nice snug fit here, right there, and we've got the screw in our cap, and that's going to make a watertight seal. Okay, the next thing you're want to, going to want to do is just take your rag and get rid of some of this extra uh, pipe compound where it just you just got a little bead just going all the way around the screw but we want the top of our screw clean because that's what's going to make the contact with the water. Now once you've done that you'll want to take one of your washers and just drop it on down in there then take your section of wire with a, uh, a loop in it like this okay and then bend it at a 90 degree angle drop it down in here okay then take another washer and just put it on, let it go all the way down in there like that. Okay, so what that's going to do is give us a pressure point that's going to squeeze that wire and it's going to hold it in place. So the next thing I'm going to do is put a nut on here. Now you can use needle nose pliers, but if you've got a nut driver, it's going to make this job a lot easier. Just while you're holding that wire down in there, uh, with them uh, washers pinching it you just want to tighten this nut down okay now that I've got this uh, piece screwed in here you can look down in here and see that my wire is uh, wedged in between them uh, two washers in there 
and I just took a Phillips head screwdriver and that nut driver and gave it a good good tight squeeze to make sure we get a good uh, tight seal and when you're done you just want to make sure you got a little bead of that compound I don't know if you can see that if the camera will focus on it uh, just all the way around you can take your finger and, and uh, smear it around there just make sure that the uh, the gap if there is any between your cap and your screw is, is filled in with that compound and then make sure the top of your screw here is clean you don't want the compound on it because that will insulate it from the uh, electricity that's going to read the uh, level on the trough okay once you get uh, all of your caps assembled the next thing you're going to need you're going to need eight of these little PVC pieces that are in about roughly an inch and a quarter long and the way I cut mine was just with these uh, plumbers uh, cutters it's kind of ratcheted and uh, it works just fine um, if you don't have a set of those you can use a hacksaw chop saw just about any type of saw is going to uh, cut your PVC pipe okay now that we have all of our little uh, inch and a quarter pieces cut we're going to start uh, assembling the sensor and the reason we need these little inch and a quarter pieces is these these don't fit together so this will just go in here and here and we'll make our pieces and do not cement them once you cement them they are in there for good they are not coming apart and I like to do a just a little dry assembly to make sure all of my wire connections everything's made there's no shorts opens anything in there uh, so I do that first and then I take it apart and assemble it and I've made several of these sensors and it, it's worked great uh, what you want to do when assembling this you want to start at the bottom and we're going to use the T fitting for the very bottom and we'll run our wire through our piece like this just give it a little push on there don't push on there too tight it'll be hard to get off then you'll want to run through your T like this and then do the same for the opposite side which is our green wire here I'll just pull this through push it on the end there and run it through the sensor like so now we've got our we've got our first tier of this sensor uh, ready to test okay the best way I've found to assemble these is to take each section and, and make each section one at a time like this and then run your wires through and then have them both both coming out one end then what you'll want to do is take your starting with the bottom section just run your wire straight through like so and assemble it from bottom to top like this so as you go along you'll take the wire from the sensor section you're working on and the previous sections and then you'll just pull them through like so and it's a lot easier to do it this way than it is to like fish each wire individually through each piece uh, one at a time you just take the whole big group like so and just give it a yank pull it through there you go so just do this assemble your whole uh, piece and your dry fit will be uh, assembled and you're ready to check continuity and then do final glue up once you get everything uh, dry fit and assembled one of the things you're going to want to be sure and do is to check the continuity of each of these leads because once you get it glued together there's no going back and fixing it you'll just have to start over so what I do is I just take a multimeter set it on the continuity testing and then just go down with some alligator clips and just make sure each one uh, of the wires is making a good contact to the screw 
Okay, so now I've got everything kind of dry fit here together. It's all assembled. Uh, I needed it to be 21 inches total length. I'm looking good on that. Uh, check continuity. So now I'm ready just to start gluing everything together. Okay, for final glue up, you're going to need some PVC cement like this. This is different from the um, compound we used on the threads of the screws. And what you want to do is just take a little bit of this cement and go around the outside edge of your pipe. Then just mash it down in there like so. Now, once you once the two pieces of PVC have contact with that cement, it's going to set really really quick. I mean like just a matter of a few seconds. So once you mash it in there, it's in there for good. Now I'm going to do the uh, other end, the end with the sensor wire. Now I like to get all the excess off of the little swab on the end because you really don't need that much. And another thing, they make a primer. It's a purple primer and for this application I don't use it. It's just one less thing I got to worry with go to the store and buy. Um, if we were going to put pressure in this pipe, like run water or air or something through it and have pressure, yes, by all means use it. But in this application, um, we don't need it. Okay, here's the uh, water sensor fully assembled, all glued up and ready to start uh, reading some water levels. Uh, part two, next video, we'll deal with this end wrap some tape around your wires. You certainly don't want one uh, going down in there because you'll never get it out once this thing's all glued up. Please like and subscribe uh, to my channel. Um, like, comment, let me know what you think. Uh, that lets me know what type of videos to be making. Uh, we're going to be making all types of stuff. Woodworking, metalworking, electronics, uh, a, a lot of things. And I really would like to know what you guys are interested in seeing. So thanks a lot. Until next time, keep making stuff.